During the January 6th attack on the Capitol, there were Trump banners and Confederate flags, the Gadsden flags. There was also Christian imagery, the wooden cross, people in prayer, the Jesus Save slogan. Now, much of the House January 6th committee's focus so far has been on right-wing extremist groups, but there are Americans who have adopted Christian nationalism who were there as well. Now, Samuel Perry is an associate professor at the University of Oklahoma and co-author of The Flag and the Cross, White Christian Nationalism and the Threat to American Democracy. Professor, uh, good to have you. Um, part of the reason we're having this conversation is because Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene just said that the Republican Party should become the Christian Nationalist Party. We'll get into that uh, in a moment. But first, what is it? What is Christian Nationalism? Sure, Christian Nationalism is an ideology uh, that seeks to uh, idealize and advocate for a fusion of, of American civic life with a very particular kind of Christianity. Uh, and when we say Christianity, we don't really mean people who love Jesus, who have tried to you know, uh, live Christ-like lives. We mean Christianity is code word for people like us, uh, who are conservative, natural-born citizens, who think like us, who look like us. And so Christian nationalism is really this ideology that seeks to fuse and institutionalize that kind of Christianity with American policy and symbols and, and founding myths and, and our kind of deep story. Hmm. And when the book says white Christian nationalism, there is, is it almost exclusively based on race? Explain that element. Sure. We find in all of our studies that we're looking at these things with national survey data, we find that when white Americans hear the language of Christian nationalism, when they hear that uh, about Christian heritage and Christian values, they, they tend to think uh, with nostalgia for a time where people like us, the right kind of people, had cultural and political influence. When, uh, say, people of color, African Americans, for example, hear Christian nationalist language, they, they often think more aspirationally for, for, uh, in terms of accountability, the kind of nation that we never quite lived up to our own values. And so we call white Christian nationalism this, this ideology that seeks to, to take back America for, uh, for all, lack of a better uh, phrasing, uh, white, ethnically white, racially white, traditional conservative Americans. Again, people like us, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks. Yeah. Now, there are some even in, in the Republican Party who would say that some of uh, Congresswoman Green's views are fringe. This, though, you say, is not, that this is, is central. This is very mainstream. Yes, we find in uh, survey after survey that the kinds of beliefs uh, that Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, affirms, that, that, that we would be proud Christian nationalists, uh, that the Republican Party ought to be the party of Christian nationalism. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene may seem uh, fringe in the fact that she is so outspoken and so blatant about this, but this is actually a very common ideology that Americans believe that uh, America was founded on biblical principles, that Christianity made us prosperous as a nation, that we ought to not only celebrate that path, but we ought to return to it. We ought to institutionalize Christianity as our national identity. We ought to make policy in light of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And we ought to uh, really privilege Christianity in the public square above other religions. And we don't have to give equal time. We don't even have to recognize other religions as much as we do uh, Christianity. Obviously, um, a natural segue into why the second half of that title is the threat to democracy. Uh, how do you then confront it? Because it, it sounds like as encompassing as the white Christian nationalist identity is, that it's not just confronting religion, it's confronting privilege, it's confronting um, one's view of oneself, esteem. How do you confront something like that? Right. I mean, you, you said it exactly right. I think this is a, an ideology that, that is fundamentally us versus them. It, it, it is not about uh, maximizing space for everybody else. It does not celebrate diversity in any kind of form. Uh, and it, and it, it really uh, takes, uh, uh, it takes the idea that, that this nation is for people like us and we ought to have uh, primary say, primary influence. And it is fundamentally anti-democratic in that regard. It is not for voter access. It is very much against uh, maximizing democratic opportunity for everybody else. So how do we confront it? We have to return to our democratic principles, uh, our, our idea that this is a, a society that celebrates legal equality uh, and access to the vote, uh, that we will not privilege one religious group over the other, that we don't have established religions in this country. That is a fundamentally uh, un-American uh, idea. And so I think it, it requires those of us who are concerned about this white Christian nationalist movement to link arms, to unite with one another, both as uh, 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 those of us who are people of faith, those of us who are not people of faith, but are at the same time very worried about this 
ideology have to have to unite and say this is not who we are as Americans and this is not what we're about. That includes Republicans as well as Democrats. And you genuinely think in this political landscape that that would be impactful? I mean, I think that's the only choice that we have is, mm. to, is, to, is to, to speak truth to this kind of movement, to say, you know, this, is, this, this may not be fringe in the sense that, that not a lot of people hold it. I mean, it's not, and I'm not talking necessarily about the majority of Americans who are white Christian nationalists. I'm not saying yeah. that. But I am saying that, that that very vocal and influential group of people who are now becoming more radicalized and militant uh, to say that we can push our agenda now and this is the time, and they mobilize their base with this kind of angry and fearful rhetoric. Uh, it, it is to speak back to them and say this is un-American. This is not. This is not what conservatives are about. This is not what Republicans are about. I, ho I hope they believe that. I hope they they affirm that this is a nation where religious liberty and religious diversity, uh, and, and racial and ethnic diversity are celebrated, valued. We want to. We want those things to be our ideals. And so I, I think it, it requires us to link arms, uh, and to and to uh, I think unite against this movement. All right, Professor Sam Perry, I thank you so much, sir. Well, thanks so much for having me.